It's late at night. You have to wake up in six hours, but sleep isn't exactly your mind's top priority right now. You're thinking about the words in your phone as you scroll past them. They aren't nice words or good words, and it doesn't really make you feel good, per se. Yet you can't really stop yourself from looking at the next set of them. So you keep going, and going, and going. This is doom scrolling. What is doom scrolling, though? The dictionary defines it as the act of spending an excessive amount of screen time devoted to the absorption of negative news. News sites like Yahoo News and the Huffington Post being some of the most popular, with negative news lining the webpage on all sides. You know just as well as I why they do it. Bad news gets clicks. It's been shown time and time again, and it's one of the reasons that the phenomenon we're talking about exists in the first place. This includes scrolling through news on social media sites like Facebook and Twitter to give the same effect. The only difference being that these sites are much better at keeping their users on the site and scrolling. In a sense, the crystal meth of the internet. But I feel like this definition focused on bad news falls short. Bad news isn't the only cause of doom scrolling, and it would be short-sighted to solely focus on it. Doom scrolling's second variation comes not through scrolling news, but from scrolling comments. This usually happens under something you agree with, say a YouTube video, or Twitter thread, or Reddit post, and one controversial enough to have some disagreement. In the comments, you don't look for things you agree with. You look for things that you don't, and then into the replies to see if someone rebuked their claim. This behavior can be rather addicting, creating somewhat of a gambler's mindset. That last comment wasn't so good, but the next one, that's gonna be a goldmine. You want to see the opinions of others dismantled, and that's what you're going for, even if it doesn't make you feel good in the process. As you can probably tell, I've spent some time doing this myself, and it all started at the beginning of 2020. Just after the start of the new year, there was this small virus going around that you might not have heard of called COVID-19. I would look up news about it every day, constantly affirming my beliefs that something bad was on the horizon. But that was all I could do, affirm my beliefs. I couldn't do anything to stop what was happening by just scrolling over the same bad news on my phone. This is a part of what doom scrolling really is at its core, a method of confirmation bias. When you see another article explaining about how the world is on fire, you don't learn much because you already know that the world is on fire. And that's a good thing, but we as humans are designed to seek out information that we already agree with, and this sucks us into a loop of consuming knowledge that we almost always already have to validate our fearful preconceptions of what lays outside our reach. However, this isn't exactly a new phenomenon. In the olden days of before 2004, Facebook and Twitter didn't exist. In their place was the news station. Back then, the news wasn't any more positive than it is now, but there is one fundamental difference between it and what we have today, and that's that it ends on its own. When you're going article to article, there's no stopping point. It doesn't just change to a different program like old TV news. This way, news and social media sites can keep their users going for long periods of time causing the user to doom scroll. Doom scrolling has also been compared to the car accident effect, based on the phenomenon where drivers on a road involuntarily look towards a car accident rather than focus on the road. A car accident is a fear-inducing spectacle, and it stimulates the amygdala, the part of the brain responsible for regulating fear, which makes it hard to look away from the car. Something similar may happen when the brain sees a fear-inducing article. It's hard to look away, so the brain doesn't, and keeps scrolling on and on, through article after article of bad news. And as media psychologist Pamela Rutledge puts it, doom scrolling really just describes the compulsive need to try and get answers when we're afraid. But this doesn't really fit with my earlier expansion of the definition of doom scrolling, does it? I doubt many people feel afraid when they're scrolling through a comment section, unless it's under a Minecraft YouTube video. And generally speaking, I don't feel afraid or any version of fear really when looking at bad news. I just feel that I need to look more and feed the addiction. But to get a second opinion on the topic, I asked my friend Dolphin about his experiences with doom scrolling. My experience with doom scrolling falls into two categories, intentional or unintentional. Now, for intentional, usually what happens is something negative occurs in my personal life. It can be basically anything as long as it puts me in a negative mood. I'll go on to usually Twitter and just read negative content with the idea to numb the pain or distract myself. Now, for an unintentional, it's more of a rabbit hole. Again, I'll be on Twitter, and for whatever reason, I'll decide to take a look at the trending page. And once I take a look at the trending page, it's not that hard to find a negative, negative post or comment. And then after that, I find more and more and more, and I'm stuck in this rabbit hole. And I'm stuck there for days, and where I'll find myself spending part of my evening just reading and consuming negative content without realizing, and it becomes a habit.
So you see, there's not really a clear answer as to why we doom scroll, and it would be next to impossible to empirically prove one if there was. Either way, if it's from compulsive confirmation or fearful investigation, the outcome is the same. This leads us to another question. Why does any of this matter? Well, first and foremost, it's a waste of time. As I said earlier, you aren't really gaining much from scrolling past information, most of which you already know. Spending hours of your life doing this is taking away hours you could be relaxing or going to parties or whatever normal people do. I don't know, I make YouTube videos in my free time. Speaking of that, I'm in no place to offer any solutions to the problem here. I'm just a man on the internet that makes gaming video essays. With this in mind, doom scrolling can lead to serious issues, such as loneliness, depression, and general anxiety, each with their own side effects that can alter the mind and body. Even though the consequences can be bad, it isn't proven how severe or even common they are within the population. I hope that if you're a person like me who has doomscrolled, this video helps you get a feel for the reasons why you may doomscroll. And if you've never done it, I hope this video shows you the process of why people do engage in it and how you can stay away. Thanks for watching guys. I know this is a lot different than what I usually do on the channel, and before you ask, I'm not gonna stop making gaming content whatsoever. I just wanted to branch out a bit into something I found interesting. As for the subject matter, there wasn't too much there, as you can tell from the length, but I really hope you liked it. And if you did, make sure to like and subscribe, and I'll see you next video. Peace.